Hi guys, welcome back to Red Dog Gaming, where today we're bringing you another unit roster guide video as Pontus. And we're going to be playing as Pergamon, the last roster that we're going to cover in this update. Now a quick note guys, a few of you have been asking for some of the unit rosters that haven't been updated in this update, like Rome and Sparta for example. I will do those eventually, whenever they get updated and the textures get updated, I'll be bringing you those. So that'll be in the next few updates, I believe, of the mod. Uh, but for now, we're just covering the ones that have been updated. So we're going to go with Pontus today. A very cool unit roster that's a mixture of both Asian and Hellenistic elements. Really cool indeed. So without further ado guys, let's get on the battlefield and let's get this party started. And let's get this party started. <clears throat> so guys, here we are on the glorious battlefield once again, and we're going to be showing you this roster in all its glory, and it is beautiful once again, like every single roster that's come in. Now, a quick note, guys, some of these units, predominantly the Asian units, haven't been fully upgraded for the textures yet, so uh, be prepared for that, but you can really tell the difference. You can tell the love and uh, care that's gone into these new beautiful units. Look at those guys. Stunning indeed. Uh, but we'll start with the very bottom of your melee roster, the Caucasian Hillman. Pretty much your lowest tier of unit. Here they are, guys. Um, and you can tell this is one of the units that hasn't had its texture updated, which you can really tell the difference. Uh, these guys look stunning. So when these guys get the textures updated, you can just imagine what they're going to look like. They're going to look unbelievable. Uh, total defense of 19. Not great, but they do have an armor-piercing weapon, very similar to the Sparabara that we saw as a Bactrian AOR unit. So they do have an armor-piercing attack of 11, so it's a bit stronger than you would think. But that 12 morale and 19 defense is not great guys so they're not going to do a huge amount of damage they are uh, fast moving are they not oh no they're not fast moving but armor piercing and effective against armor they can swim combat bonus in deserts of course as well um so they're going to do better than you really think as a unit but again quite a low tier of unit it's the same situation when we come here to the asian light spearman less morale and less melee attack 10 morale 10 melee attack but a bit more defense including a single armor, one armor point. Um, so these are your two really low tier units that you're probably going to use early on. And if I was going to choose between them to use early on, although the Light Spearmen have that 25 defense, those Caucasian Hillmen with the armor piercing, I think I'd go for those guys. But if I was going to pick a, an early game unit to use, of course it's going to be the Greek Hoplites. 13 morale, 13 melee attack, 36 defense, including 7 armor. Look at the blues on these guys. <laughs> they just look so good, don't they? Oh, they look stunning. Look at these guys. They look fantastic. And again, the blue color scheme shining through with these guys. Very nice. But your decent early game unit, the Greek Hoplites. So use these guys if you can afford them. If not, I'd probably use the, the uh, Hillman, just dependent on the situation. But with that armor piercing, I think they'd do a little bit better. So on to some of your quite elite uh, um, units, guys. You have some elite infantry that you that you have after the reforms. So we've got the Hoplites before the reforms, but after the reforms, I believe these guys come in. The Imitation Legionaries. Oh my days, guys. How good do these guys look? The Pontic Romans, eh? <laughs> the Pontic Romans imitating the Roman Legionaries. And you can tell because many of them have the chain armor rather than the Linothorax that the Greek Hellenistic factions use, although some of them are still sporting it. Uh, but those giant shields just are a feast for the eyes, aren't they? Many of them with uh, the uh, Pontic Sigil on as well, looking fantastic. Very nice indeed. I absolutely love those shields. And you can see the little details once again, guys. The texture on the shield, the wood on the back, and the little nuts and bolts in there as well. Fantastic to look at. But these guys are a really good unit, guys, as you would probably expect. 41 defense, 10 of which is armor, 7 shield, and 24 defense skill. Overall, very strong defense and spread pretty nicely across the three stats. So they're going to do well against Javis, 
17 defense against Javis and missiles, and they've got to do well in melee with 24 defense skills, so a really well-balanced uh, melee unit. 18 morale, which is fantastic, and uh, 13 melee attack, which is decent. 16 missile attack with that javelin with two missiles, so a really good, solid unit, this. Really solid indeed. Going to do a lot of of damage guys especially against lower tier units and they look fantastic as well they look pretty mean don't they they're all uh, ready to go ready to fight apart from this guy hello sir <laughs> how many mushrooms have you taken today anyway uh, let's move on to uh, the thorakitai again very strong unit 35 defense, 16 morale, 12 melee attack, you're 15 missile attack. So basically you're kind of lower tier version of the imitation legionaries. As we can see, the imitation legionaries are just a bit better in everything. But the Thorakitai, again, looking stunning. Slightly smaller shields, as we can see. Uh, again, with the cool textures and the bit of damage on the shields there. Uh, and the lovely capes as well. Fantastic to look at. But these guys are a solid mid-tier unit. What you're going to be using a lot of in the mid to late game once you've had your reforms, guys. So a solid mid-tier unit that'll stay in the fight for quite a while. You probably want to get these guys as flanking units, as with all of these infantry. And use your phalangites as your main force. Uh, your main infantry line to hold the enemy. Uh, but these guys will do a solid job at flanking or holding the line. Then we have the Pontic Guards, guys. Another stunning looking unit. And does anything say guards quite like that amount of plumage, guys? <laughs> I'm not sure. That amount of plumage and design on the helms, you can tell these guys are going to be some mean-ass guards, can't you? 18 morale, 14 melee attack. Uh, which is really good for a spear unit. 40 defense again, which is excellent. 13 of which is defense again mis against missiles, so they're not going to die quickly to missiles. And 27 defense skills, really, really strong. These guys are a very, very strong unit, guys. And they look stunning once again. I mean, I love these, these helms. I, th I know we've seen them before. Uh, in some of the other videos, these ones just look fantastic, don't they? Uh, but yeah, if you're getting these versus the Imitation Legionaries, the Imitation Legionaries have a little less um, melee attack, a little bit more armor, but a little less defense skill. So different situations for different... Uh, different um, units. I'd probably say the Imitation Legionaries with that missile attack are going to be better on the flank, but these guys probably with that defense skill will hold the line a little bit better in defense. So different units, but both fantastic. And even though I would probably use both for flanking, um, I would probably go with the Imitation Legionaries if you're predominantly going for a Phalangite uh, type army but if you don't want to go for a phalangite army you don't need to guys you can use these guys as a line rather than phalangites uh, but the phalangites of course are an option so let's go for the freedman phalangites next and they look pretty cool don't they and you can tell by looking at them they're a sort of a mid-tier unit we don't have any plumage and uh, there's not a lot of capage going on if any at all um but yeah they look uh, they look great again and you can tell. I really love with this mod the fact that you can kind of tell which units are elite and which not based on just looking at them. The types of helms they're wearing. The amount of armor they have. Um, and just the detail on the textures is stunning. You can see all these guys, their shields are all kind of battered and bruised. Um, so kind of denoting that they've been thrown together a little bit compared to some of the more elite units. But 13 morale, 17 melee attack, 34 defense. So as a mid-tier Fallen unit, guys... These guys are a bit worse, slightly, just slightly worse than a lot of the other mid-tier units where you'd probably see a defense of 35 and attack of 18. So not quite as good as some of the Hellenistic faction's mid-tier phalangite units, but that's fine. Phalangites are good anyway. They're still going to hold the line very well against normal infantry. It's just if you go phalangite on phalangite, they might lose out a little bit to the enemy phalangites. So you're going to have to back them up with some of your Pontic Guards, Imitation Legionaries, or whatever else you have on offer. But then we have the Chalka Speeders, the Gold Shields. Um, these guys looking fantastic. Look at these guys. I love the shields once again. I mean, the shields are just awesome for every single unit, aren't they? 
They just look fantastic. And these guys are your elite phalangites. And these guys are very good. Uh, 44 defense, 21 morale, 20 melee attack. I think that's one of the best phalangite units we've seen so far in the mod. So these guys are really, really good. They're certainly better than the Seleucid Chalka Speeders, which I believe were a 35 defense. Uh, but I could be wrong on that. An 18 attack. So these guys are your elite phalangites, and they look stunning, and they will do amazing, guys. So if you can get these in your army, you will be doing fantastic. Fantastic. If, I, if it was me, guys, with this unit roster, I probably, if I had the choice and I had all the money in the world, I would get these guys and completely skip these guys um, if you can. But if these... Um, but if you're, say, early game and these are the only ones you can get, I'd still get these guys anyway. Um, but the Chalka Speeders are going to be fantastic for Pontus. 30 defense skill, guys, is obscene. That is, that is the best they can get. That is fantastic. Absolutely superb. Now let's move on to the missile units. And there is Greek Slingers, Greek Archers, and Akontistai in this roster as well. But to try and fit the whole uh, rest of the unit roster, we've seen those guys loads of times before with every single other unit roster. So I've skipped them out and we've gone for a few different ones instead. The Asian Slingers, 8 defense, 2 morale. <laughs> 7 missile attack and 32 ammo. So just like the Greek Slingers, guys, these are not going to be great. <laughs> They'll still do damage, though. If you absolutely have to use them, they still will do damage. Seven missile attack for 32 missiles for 80 people will still do a decent amount of damage, but they're going to route so quickly. Then we have the Asian archers, which are actually fantastic. Although their morale is only four, 160 missile range compared to the Greek archers of 130 is huge. Ammo of 30 as well with a 12 missile attack is brilliant. These guys are a very, very good archer unit. So get these guys as your archers rather than the Greek archers if you can. Then we have the Asian skirmishers. Pretty standard skirmisher unit. 9 missile attack, 7 missiles and 14 defense. Solid, uh, solid um, skirmisher unit. But again, I'm not a huge fan of skirmisher units anyway. So there's not that much more I can really say on these guys. If you like skirmisher units, they're going to do a decent job. Uh, but um, I'm not a huge fan of them. So we'll leave those guys there, ready to go. But now we come on to the cavalry. And this is where things get interesting, guys. This is where things start to take a turn. Um, so we'll go through the Prodromoi, of course, just to have a look at some of their lovely new textures once again. Again, the blue shining with the helms, a lot of blue. Uh, your worst tier of cavalry, guys, 9 morale, 9 missile attack and 12 defense. But they will do a job if you absolutely need them to. And the one good thing with Prodromoi, because they're fast moving, guys, unlike a lot of the rest of your cavalry, um, they will chase down the enemy very effectively compared to some of your more heavily armoured cavalry. Then we have the Cappadocian Skirmisher Cavalry. These Cappadocian boys, they're impetuous. They may charge without orders, so watch out for that, guys. They're an angry unit. They're a very angry unit, but they're a little bit better, as you can see, than the Prodromoi. A little bit worse in melee attack, but that really doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, they've, uh, they've got a little bit more defense, so they're a little bit better. Now, moving on to the Aspido Foroi, guys. The Aspido Foroi. Very interesting unit. And these guys, I really like the look of them. They're like a heavily armored missile cavalry. These guys might actually turn me onto the idea of missile cavalry. Because how good they look. And actually, their stats are really decent. They're a good hybrid unit. 15 morale, which is great. Especially for a missile cavalry unit. 12 melee attack, which is really good for a missile cavalry unit. And a 23 defense, which is pretty good. And we're going to compare them to... Um, do we have Zistaphoroi down here? No, I don't think uh, Pontus gets Zistaphoroi. But if they were compared to Zistaphoroi, they wouldn't be too far behind, which is your early game heavy cavalry for most uh, Hellenic factions. So these guys honestly might turn me around to the idea of missile cavalry. They're uh, pretty nicely, they're pretty nicely uh, made up. Good stats across the board, especially for a missile cavalry. 23 defense is great. 7 armor, 7 shield. Defense skill not amazing, but 35 charge as well. 
So they're a missile cavalry that's gonna do well in melee, guys, and I really like that. I think they're great. They really are great, and they look fantastic once again, don't they? They look fucking awesome. They do look really good. So here is your starting bodyguard, guys. The Pontic General's bodyguard, of course, they're brilliant. 21 morale, 15 melee attack, 31 defense, and 55 charge. Very nice indeed. Very, very nice unit. And again, they look fantastic. I like this helm. That's quite cool. We've not really seen many of those, I don't think. Um, looks like you've got a sun visor. It's a baseball cap helm. That's what I'm going to call it, guys. Uh, and then we have the Asian Royal Bodyguards. Of course, the Cataphract General. These guys are amazing. 33 defense, 15 of which is armor. 58 charge, 21 mor morale, 17 melee attack. Absolutely stunningly good unit, guys. Absolutely fantastic. Fantastic unit. Uh, but of course, um, always remember these guys will be slow because of that armor. They are very slow. So you want to keep them close to the action. Do not let them get far away, guys, at all. <laughs> and then we get the Hetai right. If we look at that, 27 defense and 43 charge. These are your elite cavalry, remember, the Hetai right. If we go back to the Aspido Foroi, 23 defense and 35 charge is not so far behind. So well done, Aspido Foroi. You are a very good unit. Um, but yeah, your Hetai right, 18 morale, 15 melee attack. 43 charge and 27 defense. As we all know, your elite companion cavalry. Very, very nice indeed. Fantastic. And they look glorious. Not so much plumage, but a lot of capage going on. God, that guy. Look at the details, guys, once again. It's just the tiny details that are just awesome with this mod. Every time I look at it, I see a new detail. Even just the leather going round the back there, or the buckle straps. Look at that. I've never noticed those buckle straps before. Like, that is something that, like, you you don't need to put that in. Like, who is going to come up to the side of the unit like that, apart from me? <laughs> and look at those details. Like, no one. Like, you're normally looking at a battle from about here. You're never going to see that. But just those little details is why this mod has been so fantastic and so well received, guys. That is fantastic to see. <laughs> Awesome. And then we also have the Cappadocian Cavalry. Yes. The Bronze Boys. The Bronze Boys. 14 missile attack, 130 missile range, 35 ammo, 18 morale, guys. 25 defense and 52 charge. Brilliant unit. There's not much more I can say about that. A horse archer unit that's also a cataphract. There's really no competing with that. That is pretty much the most overpowered combination that you could have in the ancient world probably apart from elephants <laughs> that is the most overpowered combination you can have a cataphract that can also fire 35 arrows at you that is uh yeah they are absolutely fantastic and then we have the scythe chariots and don't these guys look good don't they look good guys they look fantastic they look pretty mean as well the guys on them with these face masks on yeah, they all look pretty mean. The pinwheel face mask, if anyone gets that reference, comment that down below. Um, they're all pinwheel. And that would actually work as well, them all being pinwheel. But anyway, um, the Pontic Scythe Chariots. 18 defense with 8 hit points. So somewhere in the region of 130, 144 defense in total, I believe. Am I uh, right there? Uh, I don't know. I'm doing the video, so I can't check quickly. But yeah, 18 defense times 8, around 140. Um, yeah, 144 defense, which is absolutely brilliant. Which they need that defense, as I've explained before, because their hitboxes are so big. Uh, but charge of 40, morale of 22, so they're not going to run away anytime soon. 17 melee attack. Now they have missile attack as well, but that doesn't really matter. Look how big those scythes are, guys. They are... <laughs> They are ginormous. You do not want to be running into your friend, uh, friendly, friendly uh, guys with those on, do you? But they are a fantastic chariot unit. They're better than the Libyan chariots that we've seen before. They're pretty much the best chariot unit in the game. They are really good. And this guy, like, I don't know who that's supposed to be. I'm assuming some sort of god. But uh, he just looks scared at the prospect of what this chariot 
is going to do to the enemy when they charge in. <laughs> And then, guys, we have our last. We have the Mercenary Galatians. Just one of the AOR units I wanted to show, show you guys. 40 defense. Very nice indeed. 16 morale, 18 melee attack. Uh, and 12 missile attack with 7. Um, six With 6 Javis, which is really good. Really good. They're a pretty cool unit. Uh, that's why I wanted to show you. But you get a lot of AOR units. You get a, a lot of AOR mercenary units with this roster, guys, because it is Pontus, of course. So uh, without further ado, guys, we're going to fight the Pergamons. A little sneak preview of their roster over here. If you don't want to see the battle, absolutely fine. Um, please do like and subscribe, though, if you have enjoyed that little unit roster guide. And for everyone who wants to watch the battle, let's get started. Let's uh, go smash the enemy into submission. And destroy them once and for all on this glorious battle map. Probably having the uh, phalan phalangites on the edge is never the greatest idea. Secondly, kind of want all my missile cav to come forward and get firing away. Including the... Uh, we'll probably get our chariots up there. The Cappadocians can come round. Um... Is that everyone? No, we need the Galatians in the fight as well. Get there, my friend. Okay, you guys. See, watch this, right? Who is that coming in at us? Oh, that's their Aspid 04, right? Get firing your Javis, bro. Okay. They've got their Hoplites firing coming into my Caucasian Hillman. That's never great. Because the Caucasian Hillmen are not the best unit. And as you can see, they are starting to, uh, to fall away. Alright, let's uh, get the Phalangites around this side. Now, the Chariots. Chariots, we know, are fantastic against, uh, against cavalry. So we want to keep them in the fight against that cavalry. Alright, you guys killed the Myusian Theroporoi. And we still haven't brought in this cavalry yet as well. So let's bring them around this side. Oh, let's watch these uh, chariots get to work. This is a Zistaforo, so a decent unit as well. Come on, chariots. Intimidated by nearby enemy. Of course they are. Yeah, we've managed to get round that flank. Let's go. So, I kind of want you to charge into them. All right, you guys get on your... Get your phalanx ready. You guys get there. What is going on over this side? I don't really know what's going on over here. I can't really see. <laughs> what is that? Maesian Cavalry. Now, you guys get in there. And then I kind of want my Aspido Foroi to get in there as well. And the Prodromoi. And then my other Cavalry. Have you sorted them out yet? Yeah, you should be in a Phalanx Formation. Kind of need to... Uh, if we charged into that infantry in the back, we'd be absolutely peachy right now. Let's get you guys round. I think you should go attack those Greek Peltas. They'll, they will completely be crushed. The Aspido 4 have done a good job there. The, the one thing with the Aspido 4 as well, guys, is that they... Uh, I think we ch charged the Theroporoi. Is that they, um, they have a really large cavalry unit. It's like 80, 80 to start with, which is absolutely obscenely good. Let's go into the Agama. Let's see whether the Agama can hack this. Oh, no. the uh, I know the chariots aren't great with infantry, but they'll do a decent enough job if they get a good charge off. So here come the uh, Cappadocians, which, of course, are going to just crush the enemy. So let's get into the Greek Hoplites with them. And let's go with the Aspidophoroi as well. Uh, see, they get bogged down on that Katoikoi Hoplite. And as you can see, they're kind of dying now. So we want to keep them out. We've not even used our proper cavalry yet. Charge, boys. Charge. Cappadocians have charged as well. Broken them. Now out, boys. Our cavalry is just too strong for them, it seems, at the minute. Right, Galatians. Get in there. Get them. Oh, you should fight the Aspido Foroi. Yes, we are basically just breaking them to pieces right now. Come on, boys. Surrounded this whole block of enemy. Yep, that's them broken. That should be them all, really. 
I don't want my cavalry in there while they're fighting to the death. Right, you guys get in there quick before they missile you to death. Where are my Cappadocians? Come on, my boys. Get out. And I'll show you the speed difference with the Cappadocians if we watch. As it... So, get the Aspidophoroi down there as well. They're actually not too slow looking at them. Normally, the uh, Cataphract sort of units are really slow. But they're actually not too bad. But are they... Yeah, they're both on the same... Uh, Amount of tiredness. Yeah, get everyone. Right. There we are. Fantastic. Smash them to pieces. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope you enjoyed that unit roster review. Unit roster guide uh, of Pontus once again. I hope you enjoyed, guys. Please do like, subscribe, all that good stuff. It really does help the channel out. So thank you very much for watching it's been a pleasure as always and i'll see you again on the next video